What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2020 Lamborghini Urus. Huge shout out and thank you to Lamborghini Charlotte. They're providing this car for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of all the brand new Lamborghinis and a really good selection of pre-owned ones as well. So let's get into the Urus. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in blue Elios and has an MSRP at $244,000. Underneath the hood, this features a 4-liter, 8-cylinder bi-turbo engine that pumps out 650 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. The engine is paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission and sends the power to a permanent 4-wheel drive system with a center limited slip differential. And with a curb weight around 4,800 pounds, you can expect 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds and a quarter mile at 11.4 seconds with 121 miles an hour and then a top speed at 190 miles an hour. The Lamborghini Urus runs off a 22 and a half gallon fuel tank and you can expect to get 12 miles per gallon in the city and 17 out on the highway. The overall length is 201.3 inches with a wheelbase at 118.2. The width including the mirrors is 85.9 and then the overall height is 64 and a half inches. The Lamborghini Urus comes standard with carbon ceramic disc brakes in all four corners. They are ventilated and drilled, and this also features the largest diameter front rotors on the market, measuring in at 17.3 inches up front with a 10 piston brake caliper, and then the rear rotors measure in at 14.6 inches with a single piston caliper. And this performance oriented braking system allows the Urus to stop from 70 to 0 in just 149 feet. The spec on this Urus has the optional set of 23 inch wheels, finished off in a two-tone diamond cut, gloss black, and a machine silver. They are a split five-spoke design with a really cool look, and the contrast against the red brake calipers and the blue bodywork looks fantastic, and they're all wrapped in a Pirelli performance tire. The Lamborghini Urus is the second SUV from the brand. The first one was the LM002 from the late 80s, early 90s. That was an off-road focused Lamborghini SUV with a naturally aspirated 12-cylinder engine and had a lot of bold design cues. You're gonna notice a lot of the same designs in the new Urus as well as some designs from the outgoing Huracan and Aventador. The front end has a lot of design cues from the outgoing models. You'll see the Y shape as well as a lot of strong angles. There's massive openings all around the front bumper to allow maximum cooling to the radiators as well as the front mount intercoolers. You'll notice a sensor and a camera in the center portion of the front bumper with hexagonal mesh all around that. On the left and right side, you'll see some body colored Y shapes that have a very cool look as well as a nice black fin on each side to help direct air inside. The lower splitter is finished off in body color and has satin silver trim and then more openings for more airflow. There's also six parking sensors up front. As we move our way up top, the Lamborghini logo is in the center with a peak above that and more sharp lines around that. There's LED daytime running lights within the LED headlights. You can see that Y shape in them as well. And then moving to the hood, it somewhat mimics the LM002 with the power dome shape, which shows off the location of this front mounted engine. And then there's more sharp lines on each side of the hood, really giving this a bold appearance. And then moving to the side profile, you'll notice more sharp lines within the bodywork. You can see the body colored fender flares with a cool hexagonal shape around the wheels. A trim piece on the rear section of this front fender with the Italian flag colors. There's a prominent body line in the sides of the door right above the door handles. And then moving our way down low, there's another satin silver trim piece with more sharp lines all throughout the door panels. This has body colored door handles and body colored mirror caps with your integrated LED turn signal. Gloss black trim all around the windows which have a really clean look. And the entire silhouette is completely Lamborghini, has a very low slung appearance, and this is the lowest SUV in its class, giving it an aggressive look. This Urus has the optional panoramic roof, and then making our way to the rear end, you'll notice a top mounted rear spoiler with the integrated third brake light, and then that leads down to a lip spoiler on the rear end of the vehicle. This has LED rear taillights with more of that Y shaped design in them. Lamborghini is written out in the center of the Urus. More sharp lines throughout the rear end of the vehicle with that satin silver trim down low. Six parking sensors down low as well with a quad tip dual exhaust system and then black trim pieces on each side of the bumper giving it an extremely wide appearance. So there's a good look at the exterior of the Lamborghini Urus. Comment down below, what do you guys think of this vehicle? I think it has a lot of Lamborghini characteristics all throughout it. When you look at a traditional Lambo, there's a lot of sharp lines, very, very aggressive vehicles. And with the Urus, they've translated that very nicely. And don't forget, your comment will enter you in to win a free GoPro this month, so definitely take advantage of that. Leave a comment on today's video, and the most commented video of the month, we're gonna pick a winner. So now, we're gonna take a look at the interior, keeping the vehicle locked. All I gotta do is keep the key in my pocket, grab the door handle, the car automatically unlocks, and we can get a good look at the interior. 
The interior of this spec has black leather all throughout with red stitching and silver accents as well. Taking a look at the door panel to start it all off, you'll notice black leather all throughout it with more red stitching. It has a very nice and premium feeling to it. We have a nice armrest right here with some good padding. All of your automatic window controls are on the left side as well as the heated mirrors and all of the mirror functions. We have a nice hexagonal shaped aluminum release handle right there with your lock and unlock and then a nice grab handle. We have memory seat controls down low as well as the power trunk lid. This features a Banyan Olufsen audio system with 21 speakers and 1700 watts. You'll also notice the hexagonal shape on this aluminum mesh for the speaker. And then along the top of the door panel we have brushed aluminum as well as some piano black and then more leather on the top. And you will notice these doors are pillarless which has a very sporty appearance. Moving our way inside, we have an aluminum door sill with Lamborghini written out. All of your power controls for the seats are on the left side here. We have perforated seats in the center with a cool hexagonal shape, red stitching along the bolsters, more red stitching on the backs, and then perforated in the center. We get Lamborghini embroidered in the headrest. These seats have a really good look to them. Very comfortable so far sitting in them. And spinning around, we have a flat bottom steering wheel with more black leather, red stitching, the Italian colors, and then some silver accents. And then now inside the Urus to go ahead and start it up, we flip this panel up, keep your foot on the brake, and we can fire it up. The Urus has four standard driving modes. We have Strata, Sport, Corsa, and Neve. This is more for off-road. Strata mode is your normal street mode, very conservative. You can drive in automatic, and that is the gauge configuration. By pulling this back, it goes into sport mode. The engine revs a little bit higher, gets a little more aggressive looking. Then pulling that back again into Corsa, we get the horizontal tachometer, g-force meter on the right side, a large gear in the center, very performance oriented, and then pulling it back now, this is the off-road mode. We have the pitch and roll meter on the left side, and then your drivetrain over on the right side, and then the three street driving modes will also change the exhaust. Along the steering wheel, we have Bluetooth and audio controls over on the right side. And then taking a look at the left, this will actually control the center screen. If we toggle left and right right here and then scroll up and down, that controls the left screen. So I can toggle through my navigation, my phone, looking at the radio station, and then information in the car. And then rolling down, we can see a lot of different information as well as trip, your driver's assistance, traffic information. And then over on the right side, by just hitting this view button right here, that'll change everything so we can see the power we're putting out. We can have the pitch and roll meter pop up, the drivetrain, the time and date, and then looking at your MPG. The steering wheel also has paddle shifters mounted right on them. They have a really cool look to them, very angular. To actually engage each gear, you put your foot on the brake, hit the right paddle, that goes into first gear. Going into reverse, you pull this back, the backup cameras pop up. To go into park, you just press the button over there, and then we can toggle manual mode over on the right side. And then over on the left side, we have all of your headlight controls. These are touchscreen buttons. They have haptic feedback, so you actually click the screen and you can feel it and it makes a vibration. You can see more of the aluminum trim, a hexagonal air vent. The Bang & Olufsen system has tweeters that pop up. We have more black leather and red stitching along the dash, the heads-up display unit. And then we have more hexagonal air vents in the center and then the silver and black trim with Lamborghini over on the right side. To take a look at this screen, we do have two different screens in the center of the Urus. Right now we're in the home menu. We can see a lot of different items that you can go under, swiping over to more information. Tapping the Urus name, we can go into the actual vehicle. Clicking right into here, we can change the different driving modes. We can see it'll also raise the adaptive air ride suspension. So going into the off-road mode right now, this is great for inclement weather. It'll raise that up as well. In the center, we have traction control hazards and then defrost buttons. And then this screen right here kind of helps out the front one up top. You have all your climate control settings right here. Engine start stop feature, you can shut that off. You have a downhill control. Tapping that button right there, it moves them to where you can have shortcuts up top. And then this section right here is the ego mode. You can click these buttons to configure it the way you would like. It comes up on the screen right here. So as I click the button, it'll change the drivetrain, how I'd like that to drive. You can change the steering wheel separately, and then same with the suspension. And then taking a look at the center, we have cup holders over on the right side. Parking sensor button, you can click that. All the cameras come up. If we click the 3D view, this is very cool to see. And then just swiping my finger over, we have a perfect look at the 360 view around the Euros. You can scroll up and down. The attention to detail is very, very impressive. And then if I go ahead and put the vehicle into reverse, we'll see what that looks like. So the rear view backup camera comes up. 
Hitting the 360 now, you can get a perfect view of where we're sitting. We can pull right up to this curb and I'll know exactly where I am. And then pulling this up, we have the center console, a little bit of space in here as well as wireless charging and then USB outlets. And then closing that, these also slide forward which is nice for extra comfort. And then looking over on the right side, opening this up, we have the glove box with a pretty good amount of space in here actually. And then taking one last look at the interior, very angular, this definitely looks like a Lamborghini. And then all of your sunroof controls are up top as well as the dome lights and just pushing this back, the sunshade will fold all the way back. And then to take a look at the rear seats in the Urus, we can go ahead and open up the door. This has a frameless door just like we saw up front, very similar layout for the entire door panel. And then as we move our way inside, we have the same leather with the smooth leather and red stitching, and then all the perforated leather in the centers. Go ahead and hop in now. I have the seat set to my height, which is 5 foot 11. We can go ahead and close the door. The Urus actually has a lot more space than I was expecting back here. This is very roomy. I have a ton of foot room in the room, maybe 6 or 7 inches in front of my knees. And my feet fit very nicely underneath the seat. I like how all this glass is right next to me, so I feel very open. And then especially having this panoramic roof that has a great look to it. And then the armrest is in a great spot. I can completely see going on a really long road trip in this. And then you can also opt for this vehicle to be a four-seater. This is the five-seater configuration with a bench seat in the back. So opening this now, we have an armrest that folds out, which is in a really good spot. And then we can press this button to have two cup holders. And then taking a look at the amenities back here, we have an LCD screen right here that is all touch screen. Just tapping this, you can adjust the fan speed, all touch sensitive. Then you can scroll down for a lower or higher temperature, which is really nice. You don't have to just tap it. You can just scroll your finger up and down. These are heated rear seats as well, which is very cool to see. And then you can control where you'd like all the air to go. You have your two climate control vents right here. Storage pockets behind each seat. And then climate on the left and the right side. Very nice amenities back here, even with speakers mounted up in the ceiling. And then onto the storage for the Urus, you can tap the button on the key fob, the one on the interior on the door panel, or there is a button right here. It'll automatically open. This does have a power lift gate. Opens right up. We have a few items in the car right now, but Lamborghini did a really good job maximizing storage space for this vehicle. Has a very low slung rear deck lid to give it that aggressive look, but as you can see, you have a very squared off, really large area for cargo. This piece also comes up. You can slide it out of the way and remove it. And then with that removed and the seats folded down, you can see just how much space you have on the back of this Urus. There even is LED lights on each side, but definitely a ton of space back here. To go inside to see these seats, they lock in place. We still have plenty of space in front of the seats, and then you can see a really good look at all of the space. And then we have buttons over on the left side to raise and lower the suspension to make it easier to load up the Urus. And then up top, we can lock and close the vehicle, or just tap the button and automatically close the rear end. All right, guys, so we are now in the Urus. We're gonna go ahead and take this on a spin to see what it's like to drive. That 360 camera view and everything is extremely nice to have. You can really see every single direction around this vehicle. It definitely makes this car very easy to maneuver in tight spaces. Now, I've driven a lot of the Audi SUVs, the Porsches, even the Bentley Bentayga. So the question in the test drive portion of this, is this actually a Lamborghini or is it really just an Audi? Because obviously it looks like a Lamborghini everywhere you look. So we'll see what kind of driving dynamics this thing has. So getting out onto the main road, plenty of ground clearance comparing it to a standard Lambo. So then in strata mode, this is just the normal street driving mode. And already it is so incredibly smooth. There's pretty much no wind noise, road noise, or anything like that. It's just gliding along, which is very nice to see. And then the overall fit and finish, of course, this is a Lamborghini. It is beautiful in here. The leather is nice to see. Everything you touch has a very premium feeling. And then for overall visibility, the windshield is very large. You can easily see the hood and you have a really good view out the front end. Looking over your left and right shoulder, everything is very easy to look around. While this does have a very sloping rear glass that has that aggressive design to it, it's actually not that bad looking over your right. You can really see well. And with the mirrors adjusted properly, I have no issue at all with visibility. So overall, normal driving, it feels like a normal luxury SUV, which is what this car should be able to do. It needs to be a normal vehicle when it wants to be, but then also it needs to be able to turn into a Lamborghini. So with that said, we will go into sport mode. Everything gets a little bit more aggressive. We will put it into manual mode as well and just feel out some of the shifting and the suspension. It is nice with these preset modes, it kind of adjusts everything at once. So if I want it a little bit different, I can tap the icon and make the steering a little bit more conservative or keep it nice and tight in the sport mode. And then now down into Corsa mode, this is the performance mode. A lot more engine sound. <laughs> and you got some nice 
the exhaust sounds to it as well. The engine has a really good sound. And even just quickly taking a turn, you can tell that the steering is really tight in it. The suspension seems very flat for a larger SUV. This actually seems like it has some good cornering abilities. All right, so getting up to some speed now in Corsa mode. Already, wow. <laughs> I'm sure you saw my body shake a little bit. This has some of that drama. I like how Lamborghinis have that. They kick in the back a little bit between upshifts. And then in the LCD screen right here, I have my G-force meter and then a power delivery torque gauge on the left side. So as far as performance, in Corsa, it, it feels like a sports car, actually. <laughs> I'm just even giving it a little bit of gas and hitting these bumps. This car, you can feel all the bumps, and it actually feels like a sports car. Man, that sound is amazing. And then if we go down back into Strata mode, the whole car just toned down. The steering is super light. The suspension is absorbing every single bump. And now it is a complete luxury car. So that is awesome how it really turns into two different cars. Back in Corsa mode, we have some nice aggressive sound to it. So coming up to some more speed bumps. I'm not used to not having to do the front lift in a Lambo. This thing just takes them. It's cool that the Urus really can be a car or an SUV that can go off road. It can do all that stuff. It can be a good comfortable daily. But then when you're in Corsa, it feels like a performance car. So we'll just do one last little acceleration just to feel it out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this thing packs a punch. And I've seen videos of these racing the Huracans and they're pretty much on par with how quickly a Huracan is gonna accelerate. And then even making a tight U-turn, that is a really tight turning radius for being a four-wheel drive vehicle. That is really nice to see. But that is about gonna wrap it up. For the Lamborghini Urus, there's some drama to this thing when you're in Corsa mode. That is really awesome. The fit and finish is amazing. It just toned down completely. It is now a luxury car. But the Urus definitely is an SUV that can pretty much do it all, and I feel a lot of Lamborghini in it. So it is definitely a Lamborghini in the form of an SUV, which is pretty epic. Once again, huge shout out and thank you to Lamborghini Charlotte for providing this vehicle for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of all the brand new Lamborghinis. They have like seven SV variations right now, which is insane to see. A bunch of 2020s and a bunch of really nice pre-owned vehicles. So definitely check them out. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video give it a massive thumbs up smash that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video